Hey, welcome everyone back to the podcast. We have a special guest, which is George Lopez, and he's going to explain some great tips just to help us introverts in certain areas. And thank you, George, for being on the podcast. How's your day going so far? So, so far, so good. It's been pretty calm days today, just mostly um, getting some stuff done around the house. I saw one of my neighbors able to drop off some food and just try to take care of a few phone calls with um, some disciples and folks. But other than that, just trying to take it easy, listen to music, not to do too much, but so far so good today. Yeah. And, and I know you're mentioning about like, that's great that you're helping like other people, even like with the neighbors, even during quarantine, how do you keep yourself really busy during this time of just kind of the lockdown? Oh, so during the lockdown, it was, it was kind of pretty hectic the first few months of the lockdown. I was mostly home with my mom at the time during the lockdown. But since I would say maybe mid-summer, she's been able to go back. I've been able to go bike riding again, just take some photographs, do a little publishing, but also just be able to um, make a few phone calls with some disciples. And it's been it's definitely helped me to um, engage a little bit more whether it's like online or um, being doing um, work with photography as a hobby or even just engaging in gaming, which I've been doing a lot more lately, which has been, it's been really fun. I've been playing Among Us with a group of disciples <laughs> online. So that's been really fun and encouraging. And just also to pray more as well while I've been going on my bike rides and to um, mm. just really to keep myself engaged but also to not lose heart not lose focus and just to not let negativity or doubt or faithlessness creep in but it's definitely been a struggle this year wow it's encouraging to hear that you're trying to connect with people even if it is through among us what is your strategy on among us bro oh man the strategy <laughs> oh man i haven't um haven't come up a concrete strategy but basically you kind of have to, um, when you know you are not the um, imposter, just just mm -hmm. try to bluff as if as you were. It's like, hey, you know, if you think I'm the imposter, vote me out, you know. But if you're not the imposter, then just try to blame shift as best as you can and just be like, why has it got to be me, you know? Why can't it be the other person, you know? <laughs> but I haven't quite figured it out yet. So that's a work in progress. Yeah, you're right, man, because I played that before and it seems to, they always get the wrong person. They just ship them out of the ship. I'm like, bro, I was not the imposter, but that's cool, man. And you were mentioning too of just like the challenges of being on the lockdown. How do you think it ultimately challenged your faith? It definitely, it definitely forced me to um, pray to God more, you know, just find other outlets to um, keep myself engaged, to keep from thinking about the current situation and just to develop a sense of gratitude like i was listening to a video yesterday and i real and it was talking about how our lack of gratitude our lack of worship or even just giving thanks to god and simple things kind of hinders the good that he wants to to give to us and use the example from moses about just the wandering in the desert for 40 years what should have been an 11 day voyage but because mm -hmm. of the people's faithlessness lack of gratitude it caused the journey to just be longer and and ultimately it even started to wear on Moses where he was starting to become ungrateful so during the time of lockdown it just really helped me to get back to what's helped me bike riding taking mm -hmm. photos editing and publishing them on my website oh, wow. and just engaging in others which I'm an introvert which I struggle to kind of naturally communicate with people but mm. during this time has definitely helped me to be more open with my emotions with the stuff that's been going on this year whether it's social injustice or isolation and people feeling alone it's definitely been a flux of emotions but i realize and engaging in those different mediums has really helped me to find faith and to rekindle that desire that i had whether it was a long time ago or just kind of put off and even engaging in new endeavors as well. So it's definitely been a learning lesson. And I'll say one of the main passages has been Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30, about just 
coming to Jesus, bear his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Sometimes it can feel like Jesus has left us or abandoned us, like he's too far ahead or he's lagging behind. But in reality, he was always in step with us the whole way, making sure that we were keep making sure that we were walking in this together at the pace that he wants us, you know, mm. but never abandoning. So it's definitely been encouraging just to get those things down to, you know, just to have those things come together and, and that realization as well. So mm. that's the main thing that I learned during this pandemic and how it's helped me to kind of reestablish my faith of prayer and building a sense of community. That's that, that was like really awesome, bro. Cause I was just thinking you're right. Even when COVID happened, it was a very, I always tell people it's, it's, it was a very extroverted world. And now that everything's slowed down, it's at God's pace on how to develop you or grow you in any of that manner. And mm-hmm. I did hear, I'll hear about you mentioning about photography and a website that you have. What did they, you get started on that during the quarantine? Or was that before quarantine, the website? Oh, I've been doing photography for like the past um, four years, amateur, amateur photography, just going around town doing, I took a few um, photography class when I was going to college, like a few years ago, and um, just been doing amateur as a hobby. Mm -hmm. I mostly engage in landscape, architecture, and um, scenic photography, but in other aspects, but it's it's very cathartic, you know. It's very cathartic for me when I do photography because it really helps me to focus on the details mm. and to just really be engaged with my envi- with my environment and also just being able to be in awe of not only what is around me but what God has you know mm. created around me as well. So, and the sense of adventure as well when I've been riding when I ride my bike throughout the neighborhood and different parts of my areas definitely helped me to discover something new so it's been really it's been pretty it's multifaceted it's not just one one way and what would you describe i mean would you say there's a certain type of photography that you really enjoy because you mentioned like landscaping or scenic was one of them Mm -hmm. oh i love i love nature i love nature photography Mm -hmm. would you have mentioned a competition or anything like that uh george and I never did a competition. <laughs> I never did a competition, but I did yeah. submit um, a few photos for a couple of websites. Like, hey, like, wow. hey, let's see what happens if I win. You know, that'd be cool. But if not, it was just to kind of, you know, just to kind of gauge the war. You know, just kind of gauge things out and see what happens. But maybe one day. That's dope. I could definitely see it as a hobby that you see continue to put into it. It's going to become something more because I noticed a lot of people started doing uh, photography when the quarantine started. You know, their pe- cameras were sold out, mics are sold out, all this stuff, but they're able to build a base and even for like weddings, would you ever consider doing some site stuff for people with like maybe wedding photography for fun or to pay some bills here and there? Yeah, I was actually... I was actually doing that. Like I was posting my information on a couple of websites for jobs and be like, Hey, you know, need photography, whether it's, um, wedding or for real estate property or anything of the sort. And it was, but only my only hindrance or main hindrance was, um, I didn't have a means to get around besides, um, public transportation, which I'm working on saving, you know, to be able to get an automobile one day. So, it creates a lot more flexibility for me. But other than that, it's like either someone had a better offer or they can do much more than what I can do. So those kind of ultimately fell a little bit short. But other than that, that's definitely something I've been looking and have been doing on top of that. Mm. But just trying to better my craft, basically, mm. in the process. That's dope. I was just thinking for some reason, Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, knock, and it'll be given to you. I think as you're going to be seeking this, I'm sure God will open the doors for you to even save up for the automobile and other things. Because even if people don't like respond to when you're currently submitting or to work with you down the road, you know, people will be more open again, even as slowly as possible vaccines are coming out that can open yeah. up doors for people and finally go out and you're able to put yourself out there. And have you, um, have experienced kind of getting people together for a photography shoot? Um, not really. To be honest, I'm mo- I'm more of a solo. <laughs> I'm uh, more of a solo act, so I'm just it's 
most of the time just me taking pictures, but um, mm. yeah. So that's that's the only thing. But uh, other than yeah, that's that's about it, really. <laughs> no, that's cool though. Regardless of it, uh, what and do you have an Instagram by any chance, uh, George, for your photography uh, or anything like that? No Instagram, just just a website that I. Facebook, I usually post my photos. A website called um, 500px.com mm. also has my photos as well. So it's kind of like a photography community, basically, That's where cool. people publish their work and just show off and comments. And mm. yeah, it's kind of like, it's somewhat similar to Facebook if I had to give a good comparison. Mm. Would you ever consider having another social media platform to promote your website where you show your photography? Hmm. I'm sure I'm sure there's some ones out there. I feel like this year I've just been kind of becoming a little bit more mm. social media savvy per se. Like I'm kind of discovering a lot more now. So mm. before it was just I was content with the minimal. Like I don't have a Twitter account. I don't have Instagram. I don't have um like other like on um, Patreon or anything like that. Like I just literally discovered how to use um Discord this year like the past <laughs> few months. So I'm just like, wow, like, it's like so much out there. No, seriously, even when this quarantine started, I wasn't the biggest on the internet or very tech savvy, but it kind of forced me to since everything's kind of moving online. And it's one of those things like, there's a big advantage, even Discord. I know there's a lot of benefits to that, bro. Even like communicating, seeing each other's videos. I didn't even know that was part of Discord. I was so used to Zoom Mm -hmm. because I know you could do videos as well on there. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Oh yeah. And, and I was going to say too, would you ever consider even like trying to team up with other photographers in your area? I don't know if they offer that to you through that, through that community you were sharing about. Um, no. Um, yeah. The community that I'm part of is mostly like, it's like, um, gaming community. So we mostly just use like the voice chat to engage when we're playing Among Us. So that's mainly just the gist of it that I use it for, but as far as anything else, I haven't explored that avenue yet. Yeah. And I was even thinking too, bro, because I know you enjoy going like solo, even vlogging and like your photography go hand in hand. That'd be super dope to show like a behind the scenes of like you doing like a monologue and then kind of just going out there and recording or, you know, taking mm-hmm. pictures of that. Because I think that'd be perfect for you if you enjoy biking a lot, because people love to see the scenic stuff, like something about it. For me, when I see those videos, it's very therapeutic. And I think maybe that's an avenue for you to check out and just you know, start editing and getting stuff like that out. But mm. I was to say, what were your challenges as an intro- introvert to connect with other people or disciples in the church or outside of it? Um, just, I would say mainly just initiation, basically. Mm-hmm. Usually I'm more the responsive rather than the initiator. But I feel like since this has been kind of going on and just really thinking about like how, how I want to develop in the areas where I'm kind of weak at, I felt like, what is a way that I can kind of better myself and just be more engaging and but also at the same time kind of tie back to God as well. So I just like to use, you know, like, um, I would say maybe like metaphors or just like mm-hmm. visuals that I try to engage in. Like, I love science and the Bible. So I feel like that's one way that I kind of able to kind of start conversations yeah. with people that's and cool. also just learning to kind of take initiative and to seeing the interest of others rather than myself, which is so easy to do. And, and also just stop being so condescending in myself because that's really a big area where I struggle with. I could be very condescending when I towards myself and more critical when I mess up or fall short in any sort of way. And, it just becomes like a vicious cycle and where I'm just like, okay, I did this. I messed up. Yada, yada. And it's like, and then, yeah, it just gets crazy. So I feel like overall it's definitely like just being take um, initiative was a struggle for me being wow. an introvert. Yeah. And I was going to say, George, I know you mentioned about the condescending. How do you counter that when you're starting to, to think that way? I just kind of had to sit back and and just kind of like what I shared earlier, just to be grateful for what I do have and mm-hmm. just to remember 
pulling in. Like I'm read, I've been reading a book called In the Grip of His Grace by um, Max Lucado. Um, it talks about just about how rich God's grace and his mercy is while also allowing us to be able to transform the way that we view ourselves. So mm-hmm. that was definitely something that really helped me to kind of take the first steps. I haven't finished it, but it's, it's like a different categories of people, mm-hmm. which I can't remember on top of my head, but it talks about four different categories of people. Like one is always trying to justify. One is the rebel. One is always mm-hmm. thinking he's never good enough. And then one who first accepts, you know, his short, you know, his shortfall and limitations, but always wants to do better, not by his strength, you know, but just being content, you know, and grow and just growing from there. So that was definitely one of the things that little by little that kind of helps me to just remember who mm-hmm. I am in God and what I have. Wow. It's good stuff, man. And I, I wanted to ask you, what was, what was your testimony? How did you come to just serving, like just believing in God and serving him and just being committed? Oh man. So I got to go back 15 years, but maybe a little bit earlier. Mm. Like prior to, I was a teenager, like I want to say sophomore year in high school. But even prior to that, I remember just being so critical of God, just like, how can I put my faith in something that I can't see or someone that I don't know? Or even though my parents were religious, you know, they were religious, like I'm come from a Latin background. So Mm. it's somewhat traditional. My parents are Catholic, but Mm. my dad didn't really quite follow it extensively. And my mom and my grandmother were more so the faith, the faith, faithful rocks, you know, in my life. But, I was just the skeptic. I was just not atheist, but I was more agnostic. I was just like, how can I, because I'm always saw my mom. I always saw my folks and I always saw that they were doing stuff for me. So I was like, how can I put my faith in someone that I can't see? But I remember like I was on vacation with my family, my mom, my dad, grandmother. Um, we were in the car and didn't have any seatbelts except for the driver. And my uncle was driving, trying to get in front of two motorcycles that were driving kind of slow on a two-lane road, but there was an oncoming car and my uncle had to kind of swerve back into the right lane again, but he lost control. And then I don't know what happened first, if the car tipped over and then we hit a tree or if we hit a tree and the car tipped over. So that was, that was still a blur to me, but it was definitely a hard impact. And I remember people were just gathering around. People dragged us out, you know, were helping us out of the car, the wreckage. And I'm just looking around, just still trying to process everything, like what just happened, you know? And and even to this day, it was like, I'm still thinking like, man, somebody should have died because my grandmother was there, my mom, my dad, and myself, and my uncle. So it was just like, wow. So I felt like that was really the catalyst that kind of got me thinking about God a little bit more. And then fast forward um, five years from that point, I was 20 years old at the time, just my second year in college and um, community college. And just like, remember asking one of my classmates, hey, what have you been up to during the summer? And she tells me she was doing um, midweek and Bible studies. So at that point I was like, hmm, like maybe, And then I was like, maybe I should check it out and see. I was like, give me the name, the address, phone number, and I'm there. So just kind of fast forward a few months. In 2010, Halloween, I became a disciple. And man, it's it's been quite a journey, but it's one that I don't regret, even on my worst days. Wow, that was a really awesome uh, testimony and story that you shared there. It just shows how great great God is always. And just the fact that you, you mentioned about the whole car incident, I'm just like, man, he had a plan to see it through that you became a disciple. And I think that's really encouraging to hear. Uh, and like you said, your faith was like, I can't put trust into something that I don't see. And I, I agree with you. That's how I started out. Even me from the Latin culture too, or Catholic, you know, it's just automatic that you have to be in there. And I'm just like, 
something about it was like, no, something's off. It's too traditional. And like, even when we read, yeah. when we read the Bible, the Bible studies myself, I'm like, dude, this is totally the Catholic church. And I'm trying to have a relationship with God, not necessarily this rule thing, but it's great yeah. that we're able to to break out of that, you know, cause it's, it could be generational where you believe this and it might not be the right path to, to Jesus Christ. But mm-hmm. what is uh, keeping you motivated right now uh, during quarantine to just be like, I'm going to stay faithful to God, even though things are kind of, by the news, the media, the fear, kind of gloomy. Mm. One thing that's definitely been helpful is taking things one day at a time mm. because I, I just know that anything could change in an instant. It can change for the better. It can change for the worse. But I just can't. I mean, all I can do is be hopeful for the future. But at the same time, I can only control what I can con- control today. And that's really just been the main motivation during this time, just taking things um, day to day and not being able to worry about tomorrow because it's like Matthew 6, you know, verse 34 was like, who can add a minute, an hour, you know, a second to their life. And it's like, whether you worry or don't worry, time is still going to flow the same way. So Mm. I felt like that was really just the biggest help, just taking things one day at a time and, And just trying to find something good in the day, trying to find a silver lining, trying to find something that I can take away from each day to just kind of learn. and But also just to try to learn as much as I can about myself, about God, just trying to learn something new every day. And I feel like that's definitely been been helpful. And as well as just keeping in touch with those in in my circle and in my life. Mm. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you, how do you go about selecting the right people in your close circle of friends? Well, some of them that I know, like before all this has started for basically since the beginning of my walk with God. So I feel like I can go with them, but I can talk to them about a lot of deep seated personal stuff. But also during this time, it's definitely helped me to just kind of build new relationships as well to just be able to um just trust in God to not worry about being hurt Mm -hmm. also to just loving unconditionally like in um first John chapter four where it says in um, verse 17 and 18 like love drives out fear but Mm -hmm. love cannot be made complete because if there's fear you know so it's kind of like in order for me to grow, I have to trust. In order to trust, I have to love, you know. And if I can't love or trust, you know, who I share my heart or details of my life, then it's like I'm just living in a constant state of fear and I'm never going to get to the point where God wants me to. And I end up finding, you know, conversations with disciples, like whether it's those who I know my whole life or some that i know known for a few months or even this year that I feel like, wow, like we share a lot in common, you know, so mm-hmm. we can help each other, you know, so, and we just find so much healing and motivation that way. So it's definitely been more like a journey of trust, but also just being able to love and love without fear, basically, which isn't always easy mm-hmm. in different ways. So if I can just love, you know, grow and loving strangers, you know, then mm-hmm. I feel like that would just be a huge leap forward you know so that's cool man i really like what you're saying even earlier saying that something you know about yourself is to take initiative to build with people versus allowing them to come to you as an introvert what little things have you done to slowly be like for us even for me coming out of our hermit shells to be like hey how's your day going or hey what you been up to <laughs> what tips would you offer to them uh i would just I would just say, you know, just start off with, hello, how you doing? How's things been? And you can just kind of share something about like something that you learned or saying like, hey, I've been thinking about you. Is How's everything been? Or even just saying like, even open up your, open up to yourself a little bit. Like, hey, like, um, I know this may seem kind of awkward, but um, can you pray for me in this area? Or just you know, just share something that you learned recently. So I would say that's kind of like the main things that I try to do. So it doesn't become awkward, like do general first and then 
try to somehow direct it back to God and the person that you're speaking to. But let it be intentional, let it be genuine and not just a checklist mentality like, hey, I spoke to someone, yada, 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 and I feel good. But it's like, you know, just really invest in that person to see how they're doing. And it isn't, it isn't always easy, and but it's definitely just very fruitful mm. in, the, in the long term. But man, yeah, that's really encouraging to hear the efforts. And for people listening, that's really great stuff just to start with a little hello. And uh, I know you're big on gaming. Um, have you been following with Pokemon and the recent things going on there with the latest games? <laughs> <laughs> um, I heard Pokemon Go has been blowing up ever since this happened. So I have I think I might want to get Pokemon Go. But to be honest, I feel like I just started to kind of game a little bit more this year. But um, yeah, I would say like Among Us has been the main game that I've been going to. But other than that, I haven't been too big on gaming. So, uh-huh. as, yeah, you know, as of yet. Yeah. I yeah. just find myself, yeah, I just find myself either listening to music, um, writing, um, just writing stuff in my journal or mm. some ideas or whatever, or just watching TV. So, gaming is something that I'm little by little getting the hang of. You know, you mentioned about journaling. How important is it to, to journal for, you, for yourself? Um, it, help, it helps me to remember where I was at one point in my, you know, just kind of like reminders in a sense, like, um, like for example, on, um, Facebook, it will sometimes share a memory with me, like from five years, seven years, 10 years ago. Mm. And sometimes it'll be like a thought or a passage or anything, you know, anything random. And, um, I just found myself looking, I was like, Hmm, like, did I say that? Or like, I wonder what my thought was during that process. So I find it to just kind of be helpful with a reminder of sorts of just like my younger self kind of mm. forwarding this to my future self. Like, hey, there's going to come a time where you might need this encouragement, whether mm. it's now or 10 years from now. So that's kind of how I look at it, just to, as a reminder of where I was at one point and where I'm at now. I, I really love that a lot, man, because I actually have a journal too. That's why I brought it up because I also do the same thing where I, I remember I started doing the journaling back. This is when I, I became a disciple around 2015, uh, becoming a Christian. And then 20, late 2016 or early 2017, I got a journal at the 99 cents. So I was like, whatever, I'm going to start this thing out and just write in <laughs> it. And you're right about the progress. I look back at like all these things. I was talking about my interests. I was talking about like where I want to go, career, job. And I, and I put the date on there, you know, like, I don't know, like September 10 or whatever. And then I look back, I'm like, whoa, this is kind of cringy, but it helps me be like, this is where I'm not at anymore. And like, that's your progress report. And that's your yeah. story. And I think, like you mentioned, that also helps you motivate you to be like, I don't, I'm not there anymore. And I could do even better and write a bigger, like, it's almost like you're writing your own novel, but God's giving mm-hmm. you the story because he's, he's helping you live out your day, your life every day. And I think that's a powerful tool. I just wanted to just like mention this and for people listening, it's awesome to have a journal because it just keeps track of where you're at and you could always look back and things like, dang, that's how I used to be, but I can always improve and have a healthy mindset about where you're at in life. But Mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing a lot of those things, uh, George. I wanted to ask you, I know COVID-19 has been a crazy year for everybody. What do Mm -hmm. you feel was the biggest challenge for you with COVID-19? Mm, so yeah definitely the biggest challenge was yeah just i would say currently at the moment not working i would say because i feel like yeah just like i like to be productive now i just like to be um feel like i'm contributing to something whether it's you know saving for a rainy day or just giving to others or um for family to and even for like future endeavors, I feel like it's kind of been, it kind of put those things on hold to a degree, even though in the beginning of the year, I was kind of like, man, I need a break, you know, but yeah. which I still, which I'm grateful that it did. But at the same time, it's definitely helped me to just kind of, kind of slow down, take care of myself. But 
at the same time, I feel like it really just kind of put certain things to a halt, but I'm just learning to be very rejoiceful that I have what I have at the moment and everything else will be taken care of. I just have to do my part, do my best, take things one day at a time and, and just not worry, you know? So it was that. And then it's also just like, it could be like family health as well. Like, mm-hmm. Thankfully, no one in my family got sick with the virus, but right. it's, I felt like anxiety was just kind of weighing on, you know, like my family at times, whether it was with my mom or my folks from the islands, you know, mm. it was definitely just kind of weighing on everyone, the uncertainty. So I feel like just during that time, it really helped me to reestablish, you know, praying to God and just finding faith, you know, just finding faith in those dark times where I didn't have an answer to all the questions, but just being able to um, be grateful at the same time. So I would say that was where the biggest challenges, just just learning to kind of slow down, but also just having faith in the process that things will, will get better to where they need to be. Just have to trust God one, one step at a time. Very cool. And you did mention about your family back in the islands. Were you mentioning earlier about uh, Cuba or is it something different of the islands? Uh, both. Um, so my, um, so I have family in Cuba and uh, Dominican Republic. My oh, that dad's side of the family is Dominican. My mom's side is Cuban. So it's definitely a lot of financial need and just necessities as well. So it's definitely tough at the moment with imports being very limited at the moment but other than that everyone's staying in good spirits and trying to support each other so we're just trying to keep in touch and take friends day to day Mm, thank you for sharing that and and what do you feel was the biggest lesson you learned from COVID-19 I feel like because like a number of things but i would say the biggest thing for me is the importance of relationships and just being just being engaging in the community because no one can do this on their own like no one is an island like we need each other like just we all need someone to just share our hearts with to share our fears to share our our thoughts someone to pray with, someone to talk to. We all need somebody. So I feel like it's definitely helped me to, biggest lessons definitely just to just um, connect with people to engage a little bit more and and ultimately just um, praying to God and taking things one day at a time. Mm, thank you for sharing that. And before we wrap up the podcast, any shout outs that you want to give out? Oh man, I definitely just want to give a shout out to, of course, my, to my family, just my spiritual family, just want to thank them for everything that they've done, whether it's with the Nerd to the Kingdom page or whether it's just those in my circle and the home ministry where I'm from, uh, which is Capital Rivers. I just want to give those guys a big shout out and, and hopefully one day we can worship without fear of getting sick and just... Mm-hmm be able to embrace each other with open arms, you know, and, and then just also my family, of course, if they're watching this, how about just thank you for just being there for me to be able to come to you, to talk to you and to just share my heart and my thoughts and to know I wouldn't be here without them. And yeah, and just, and just ultimately last, but not least, you know, God and Jesus for just helping me to embrace the change that, has taken place personally, emotionally, spiritually for the better, and just being there in tandem with me step by step. So those are, the, those are my main shout outs. Wow, man. Thank you so much. Just for a lot of great stuff and tips, George, this was a great podcast and just really encouraging just to hear even like signing some scriptures and just you really being in tune with God. I can really sense that. And just from the conversation, I do wish you the best in photography. Thank you for sharing a lot of tips on that. And I will put the link if you can send it to me on the description. And if you ever decide to make an Instagram, I'd love to share that as well for people to check out your art as well and your photography on there, but that'll be wrapping up for the podcast. Thank you so much, George. 
Thank you so much, Peter. And have a good one. And thanks for having me on, mate. And best of endeavors for you as well with this podcast. Hopefully you get paid for it. Then you can just, <laughs> blow it, you know, you'll be like a household name. Oh, man, that means a lot. Thank you so much. Just serving you and other people that are listening means a lot. Thank you, George. No problem, mate. Take care. Take care.